I am so proud and honored to show you my Animal Crossing Island today. It's finally done. This is by far my most favorite and most epic and awesome and beautiful island I think I have ever done. I wanted to create an island that not only would I love playing on, um, but love aesthetically as well, which is kind of a tough balance. I love a good cluttered island, don't get me wrong, but I find that it's not so easy to play on those islands. I've done both variations in the past, super cluttery and cute and beautiful, and also um, very open and cute and beautiful. Today, I'm showing you an island with, I think, the perfect mix. I also think that this island might just be my forever island. I love it so much. But instead of talking your ear off about concept, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my map first. When I started this island, right before the 2.0 update came out, I was doing this thing called hardcore mode. I've done a video on it in the past if you're interested in all of the specifics, but it's essentially just like a stripped back, normal way of playing the game. For some of us, it really might not seem that hardcore. A lot of us probably play like this anyways, but for those like me, it's like basically the opposite playstyle. Since I decorate a lot, I find myself going to treasure islands and doing little cheats and things, time traveling, all of that. So I really wanted to go back to basics and play the game kind of like normal. In the months after, I have since ditched the methodology, but I did keep one rule and that is no terraforming. Okay, the term no terraforming is uh, has a little asterisk at the end, a little disclaimer. 99.9% .9 of the island is not terraformed or waterscaped completely untouched. I will admit, okay, I don't wanna be list the liar. I did do some slight adjustments, maybe on cliffs here and there where I wanted to put a incline. For instance, I have a diagonal bridge that would not have been able to be a diagonal bridge if I did not slightly adjust the water. You know what, if you have a problem with it, sue me. Bring, bring it up with the, the law, the Animal Crossing law. I still regard this to be a no terraforming and no waterscaping island since I barely even touched it and it is indistinguishable from my OG map. I also don't consider um, the pathing obviously to be included in the no terraforming clause. Welcome to Tiny Town Squared, named after my beautiful, gorgeous, amazing cat, Tiny, who is not so tiny. He's actually quite a big boy. And it's called Tiny Town Squared because my last island was called Tiny Town. So of course, it's it's the second iteration. Now, um, apparently it's the fishing tourney today. So um, cool, maybe I'll do that later. Uh, maybe. The first thing that I would like to show you is my little seasonal area right next to the plaza. Somebody had actually suggested that I do this during a stream and I really like it. For the longest time it was Valentine's Day, but yesterday we did just change it to Bunny Day because that's the new holiday that's coming up and it fits perfectly with like my little spring thing I have going on. Now, um, my island theme has, you know, it's a point of contention because I don't actually know what it is. See, I obviously take a lot of inspiration from like city islands, uh, hence this uh, giant amount of sidewalk. I'm really inspired by specifically the Japanese city islands and um, kid core, spring core islands. I also really desperately needed this island to be done for cherry blossom season because I think it's the best season in Animal Crossing. So I wanted to utilize as much pink and beautiful cherry blossomage as possible. I don't know what to call this. A uh, sitting area? It, it seems more like just a transition area from the resident services and honest to god I didn't really know what to put here so this is kind of just uh, what came to be. Right underneath, I will show you, I have a little market section. This is the post office. This is where I get all of my mail and a uh, flower shop. There's a cute little flower shop run by a gyroid. He's a very good employee. And then this is like a kid's toy plushie shop run by a squeakoid, of course, and froggy chair. I like to imagine froggy chair is the owner, squeakoid's the assistant manager. This dog is the model mannequin. We also have a bakery that is run by Arfoid over here. And then just like a Little sitting area. I'm obsessed with the plastic bench. Um, you will see probably about a hundred of them all over my island. It comes in just such beautiful colors, I can't help myself. I'll go ahead and take you this way to go um, visit Lily and Joey's houses. For their yard, I kept it nice and simple, a little flower garden. Originally, I had two villagers here, um, Tad and Shep. Tad, I loved him to death and I felt so bad. I had Lily in my campsite and for some reason, I decided to take her and replace Tad. And I I miss him. It makes me so sad, but now I guess I just have Lily here. And then Joey, I had his amiibo cards, so um, I decided to move him in because, you know, 
Shep, he's like whatever to me. It feels horrible to say, but it's true. So their yard is nice and simple, but I also wanted to make sure they had access to this little pond that was already here because they are um, a duck and a frog. And you know what those, those guys love? They love pond. See, look at her. She's even fishing right now. What a little cutie beans. Next up, I'm gonna show you, this is just my entrance, obviously my airport right here. Um, I like to keep it nice and open by the entrance so that I can trade and things super easy. And since we got so much good farm stuff from the 2.0 update, I have a small farm right here. All of the crops too, so that I never run out of anything. And um, this is my first beach I'm really gonna show you. It might, it might be the last. <laughs> Honestly, I kept the beaches super simple. Um, to fill up some of the gaps, I used the wave breakers, but um, there's, you know, small areas here and there kind of like this. Uh, beach volleyball thing. However, I'm not super concerned with having my beaches decorated. I, I just, I don't like it. I am a decorated beach hater. Keep it simple. Just like a, just like a real beach. I don't know. Nook's cranny. We have a parking lot here. Um, and I guess a fulfillment truck. And right next to our Nook's cranny is the Able Sisters. And they have a cute little sitting area out front. And of course their scooters, um, they are scooting in style. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do with the Able Sisters, but when in doubt, parking lot. It's just, it's foolproof. It works every time. Next up is one of my favorite areas of the island, and that is this little park. We, it, there's everything you need here. Snacks, drinks, money machine, um, a picnic, seating, bike. I love it so much. I feel like this was like one of my really most strongest concepts here. It's just so pretty. And then it leads right into a soccer field, a half soccer field. A full soccer field would be a lot, honestly. And then you can walk out of the soccer field from here um, right back down this road to our first neighborhood. This is Marcel's yard. Marcel is super cool. I loves him. He has a, um, what do you call this? A uh, yard sale. See what I mean? This is kind of where I introduced a lot of the clutter. I'll make my villagers weave in and out of things, not me. I haven't decorated that many houses of my villagers on my actual island, since you can do that with Happy Home Paradise now. I figure I can do that at my own pace a little bit later. Marcel, however, is one of the villagers that I have decorated his house, so I'm gonna show you. So for Marcel, Marcel, his house had a ton of Japanese objects in it, so I wanted to make sure that I went with that when redoing his house. And I decided to give him like a Japanese antique shop. I, you know what, I, I think I did a pretty good eye. Uh pretty good job there. Back here, of course, is his living area. I want to make sure my villagers have a place to um, eat and sleep. So that is his living area. And um, his favorite song is Comrade KK. I just, you know, I knew that me and Marcel had a connection. <laughs> so yeah, this was this was a really fun one to make. Um, and I can't wait to do all of my villagers' houses. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And then right next to Marcel's house, we have Silvana. Silvana has a laundromat. Couldn't really tell you um, the best reason as to why I, you know, I just wanted to build a laundromat, to be honest. <laughs> I think it's cute to have this outside. And then um, Silvana is not home, but her house is decorated as well. But of course her house is like beautiful and springy and overgrown and luscious and gorgeous. Next up we have Lyman's house. Lyman is actually the last standing starter villager. The other one was Mira. She had to go. But Lyman is here and he owns a plant stand, even though he's a jock. Just because he likes to lift weights doesn't mean he also doesn't love to water plants. We're defying villager personality stereotypes here on Tiny Town Squared. I will show you his house though. It is done. Of course, we kept it nice and naturey in here because he's a plant guy. I love it. It's like the jungle, a seating area for him to eat his little um, green spaghetti or I don't know what that is. I'm obsessed, obsessed with this build as well. I haven't been in here in a while. We kind of crushed this one to be honest. We are leaving our first First neighborhood and headed on over um, up towards my house. This is an orchard on the left here, the smallest orchard you've ever seen. Didn't want to do like a huge orchard on this island. I just wanted all of the fruits at my disposal in case I needed them. Uh, this is a huge theme of my island. Vending machines, vending machines, vending machines. They're also everywhere. And little crafting areas. I have a couple of these just in case I need them at any point when I'm decorating. They've been super convenient to have just everywhere. A crafting area and a storage shed. You can't go wrong. Crossing the bridge up here um, towards 
really know what this is. A plaza, I suppose. I, I don't know. But this is my house. I love my house build. It's actually so pretty. I do have some disappointing news, however. My house is not done. The last couple weeks, I have been trying really, really hard to get my house to a good place, but I just don't like anything that I've been building. I've been trying to use the Room Sketch app to plan out rooms in advance, but you know, once I'm done, I'm like, oh, this is good. And then I'll think on it a little bit and I'll be like, ah, I just don't, don't love it enough. So I decided to say, screw it. The house isn't going to get finished yet. It could be a huge project for me. Maybe I'll make a series on like actually getting my house done and making it cute. Right now it's mostly empty and I just am at a loss of what to do. We're gonna leave my little house plot and head up to the museum. I have all these ruins, ruins, Ruin, runes, <laughs> very ancient history like, I don't know. And I love this gazebo as well. It's so pretty in this color variation with all the moss. Just a lovely, beautiful little museum build. Of course, we got Brewster Bucks and a Brewstoid and a Brewster cookie. I, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I was representing the roost so hard, but I guess that I am. Next to the museum is a peninsula. I did slightly decorate it just a little bit. It's pretty cute, nice and springy and light. Moving on, however, um, up this incline. Okay, see what I mean? I, I terraformed the incline in just a little bit so it wasn't sticking out so far. Sue me, honestly, this is so much cuter. It just, it looks like it belongs there. I'm getting so defensive. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just anticipating that, well, actually, you terraformed a little bit, so this is not a no terraforming island. Thick skin, okay, less thick skin. <laughs> this is the more natural side of my island. Um, it's kind of hard to place roads and sidewalks when the terraforming's like this, so I wanted to keep it nice and sprawl out of course very springy you'll see just like a lot of flowerage but in these little spots I was able to sneak in a little bit of sidewalk so um, a bench sitting area that you can expect nothing less from me but also this is very important this is my gyroid farm now if I have done everything correctly in my power every single tile on this island is filled and if it doesn't look filled it has a custom design that is fully transparent on it. So what that means is that all of my fossils and my gyroids and see this little money dig spot, all of that is going to spawn here inside of this little plot. And honestly, I do think that I did do it correctly because today everything spawned in here um, and then I planted my gyroids. So I don't know. I mean, it, it worked out. I love it because now every day when I get on, I can just come on up here real quick. It's right next to my house and dig up everything that I need to dig up and replant those gyroids so that I can water them and get them growing. It's my most favorite, best thing I've ever done. <laughs> and truthfully, uh, my pride and joy. We're moving on to one of my other most favorite places places of the island. It's probably, you know what, this probably ranks third on the list with that park earlier being second. The first, you'll know, you'll know. This is my giant, let me walk slow here so you can get the full scope, my giant flower fields. It's beautiful, it's overgrown, and it's uh, so pastel and springy, I love it. We'll even get like a better view from down here. There's like a little picnic. I, I don't like to speak so highly of myself, but this one was a definite slay. Look at how pretty, I just, I gotta give you like a nice beautiful little view here. Look at how pretty that looks. I highly recommend you do a flower field. This is everything that I ever wanted. I am so, so glad that this one worked out. It took a long time to get all the flowers that we needed, but it is full and luscious and beautiful and um, just just, just heavenly. I feel like I can hang out in there all day, but we're gonna go ahead and um, check out our campsite next. Now, I always forget that my campsite is here, to be honest, so if I move anything, this might have to be the first. I don't know why, I just, you know, I like this, but it doesn't feel like it's fully perfect. Not my least favorite, but not my most favorite, you know? Down here, however, is this barbecue. When I had Shep and Tad's house, remember we were there earlier? When I had done that, I put this barbecue in their front yard. However, when they moved and then it turned into Lily and Joey's yards, I was like, eh, they're not really barbecue people. So I ended up moving this barbecue over nearby the campsite and it worked out great because it's beautiful and cute and I love it. This is a construction site. Now, just like how we got a ton of cool farm stuff, 
with the 2.0 update, we got so much cool construction equipment. I was like, I have to make a little under construction zone just so I can use all of this stuff. I love these big old construction machines and then the scaffolding thing here. Is this scaffolding? I thought you could want walk under scaffolding. I don't know what that is, but it's definitely a cool concept. And um, I'm just glad that I'm able to use all this construction stuff. It looks great. Now I'm gonna cross this bridge and head immediately up here to this little strip of land. For the longest time, I didn't know what to do here until it hit me. It needs to be a lookout. Is that not so cool? And then the bunny day planters, oh my God, genius. I didn't come up with it. Somebody from my stream did. Shout out to whoever that was, cause it was a great idea. But the lookout turned out really good. And then it leads us into um, this little outdoor sauna, like outdoor hot spring situation. This outdoor bath kind of reminds me of like a Japanese onsen or something. So I was like, let's go ahead and try to do that. I, you know what? It was the last build I ever did on this island. And I was just about sick and tired of decorating. So it's pretty sparse um, and it just kind of is here. It feels a little random to me, but I don't know. I still think it's kind of pretty. And then it leads us to our secret beach down here. This is another thing I did have to terraform so I could put a cutesy little ladder. I had to add this little lip because it was not gonna let me put a ladder um, on the original cliff thing. Again, I still consider this no terraforming, but this is my secret beach. Um, again, kept it super simple. A little bit of a fishing theme. We're gonna move on to my most favorite area of the island. This was the moment. After completing this whole build, this was the moment that I knew this is exactly my island theme. Welcome to our second big neighborhood. Of course, we've got a sitting area with vending machines. It was the first of its kind on this island. And then of course we've got yards. We've got Shino's yard, she's got a tea party. And then we've got Punchy, my number one favorite villager, the best of all time. He's lazy, so he gets to watch TV outside. And then the last house in this neighborhood is Tangy's. Tangy has a farmer's market. He's a farmer girl. I love this neighborhood so much. And it's just really special to me because it was the first thing that I built on this island where I was like, yes, this is perfect. I owe this build to somebody very, very special who created almost all of the codes I'm using on this island, truthfully. Most of the sidewalks and little floor tiles, um, that beautiful white flower design, are all made by Crystal Cat on Twitter. Please, please, please go and check them out. All of their codes are legitimately like my favorite and they're all over my island, plastered everywhere. This island would not be what it is if it were not for that creator. So please, please go check them out. And then I will have a link to all the codes that I'm using in the description if you wanna check it out. But that neighborhood, is the blueprint. She's doing amazing things. I also really love this build down here. So this is a park and basketball court. I really enjoy how this turned out. It looks super pretty. And then down here, of course, we have a little park. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and show you one more beach. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it, it's not even a beach, it's the dock. I kept the dock nice and open so I can fish down here, um, but I wanted to make sure it was decorated just a little bit. This little gyroid, um, you know, some people say it reminds them of something very specific. For me, I was thinking sea glass. I also love that she whistles. Moving on, moving on to another really fun one over here. We have a food truck. This food truck design is so cool on this um, truck. <laughs> it's an ice cream truck. And so, um, yeah, we have a ton of, you know, food and ice cream. No ice cream, actually. Did I forget to put ice cream on for the ice cream truck? Whatever. Oh, that makes me sad, but that's fine. Um, and of course, a parking lot. When in doubt, put a parking lot. Um, and I think it fits really well, especially since there is a um, gas station up here. Gotta have somewhere to pump your gas. If we've got all these cars, we gotta make sure that we have all of the facilities that people need. And then welcome to the 7-Eleven, a store for all of my villagers convenience needs, like ice cream and soda pops and Fleshies. I wish I could live here IRL. I'm dead serious. But um, we are headed into one of the last big areas and Oh my God, what is happening here? What is happening here? What is happening here? Okay, so if you've been keeping up with my island, you will know that Gail and Norma here are gay. And I even gave them lesbian flag colors scheme for their yard flowers. I love them so much. And right now they are fishing together. Oh my God. <laughs> I told you guys this was canon, okay? I mean, would they be fishing together if they were not together? No, I don't think that they would be. That was amazing and incredible. But yeah, this is their yards. Um, it's. It, I decided to keep them together because of course, you know, they're together. And oh my God, I see a dig spot back there. You know what? I, I'm gonna ignore it for now. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dang it, what spawned over there? I don't I don't even wanna know. They have a little um, eating thing here to eat. It's a small yard, I, I, there wasn't much I could do. They're also farmer girls, um, cause they're next to the farm. I figure, you know, Norma's a cow, kinda like a farm thing. And last but definitely not least, this is a farmer's market. We have a plant stall. There's a, a scents and pottery and jewelry stall. Coffee, as well as some savory snacks. Except for fruit pizza, that should be a normal pizza, but I did not have the recipe for normal pizza. Also, why is that gyroid screaming at me? Stop. <laughs> But that just about covers Tiny Town Squared. I think I did a really, really good job here and I'm gonna brag about it till the day I die. So moral of the story here, okay? Let's have a sit down, let's have a combo. Don't stress too hard when you're trying to make an Animal Crossing Island. The biggest stress factor for me has always been terraforming and waterscaping. Not only does it take forever, but I find that it doesn't ever look exactly how I picture it in my head and I get frustrated. So taking that out of the equation and doing no terraforming, no waterscaping has been a blessing. I love my natural island layout and you know, there's maybe some builds that I might wanna do in the future that involve terraforming and waterscaping and that could be fun to venture out and do, but doing an entire island with nothing of the sort was awesome. Really great experience, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I also had a lot of fun making this island um, in terms of theming. I said this earlier, but this could really be like a forever island theme for me. I always found myself getting jealous of like those Japanese school islands and islands that stick in cherry blossom season. They're just so freaking pretty. I, that's what I wanted. And so I did it. Having this be my island with just maybe some seasonal updates from here on out is probably the best thing for me. I have decided that I'm not really one of those content creators that can just push out islands and builds all the time, especially since I've always wanted to just have a complete island and stick with it. I'd love to work on the museum, the Critterpedia, take my time, enjoy the game for what it is, and just play super casually for a while. And that is the Crosser way. Who's with me? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my island tour. Again, don't forget to subscribe if you like Animal Crossing. I love Animal Crossing. Look, we have that in common. And just because I said, you know, I am gonna play the game casually doesn't mean I'm not gonna have content to push out for you guys. Happy Home Paradise and the 2.0 update leaves us open for so much more different things that I could do on the channel and I'm very, very excited. If you'd like to come hang out with us on Twitch, feel free to do so. My other socials are down below. Couldn't have done this island without the help of my amazing community so thank you thank you everybody who comments on videos gives suggestions comes into twitch stream to help me brainstorm builds thank you guys so much for all of your help I'd also love to give a big thank you to my mod community in the discord thank you thank you so much discord and stream mods you guys are awesome especially Gary thank you so much for always helping me get all these items <laughs> couldn't have done it without you guys thank you thank you so much I hope you guys are having a great day and you continue to do so Stardew Valley next week stay tuned um, and I will see you in the next one.